What are the key missions for SpaceX's next Starship launch? And also, how many launches from Kennedy Space Center at NASA does SpaceX want to do for the Starship in the future? We'll find out. They've successfully stacked Starship and the booster at Starbase, Texas. So the next step, this is a fit test right now. So the booster and the ship are mated together on the launch pad and they're testing all the internals, the electronics, the plumbing, everything that's inside of the Starship, but also the ground systems, everything that makes Starship and the booster work for the flight of IFT-4. Now, once this is all done, once the fit check is all done, and once they make sure that all the systems are go, they will remove the ship from the booster, and maybe they're going to take it back to the bay and do some work on it. Now, some of this work is probably going to be uh, some heat tiles. There is about seven, I believe, heat tiles missing from the Starship right now, and that's okay. Right now, they're just fit testing it, and they're going to do the final tiling before they stack it up one more time before the flight of IFT-4. Now, in the background, SpaceX is working with the FAA, and they're working on closing out items for the IFT-3 report. Now, the incident report is important because everything that happened with IFT-3, everything that went kind of wrong with IFT-3, they have to fix that before they launch IFT-4 Starship. So what are those things? We're not exactly sure. SpaceX hasn't really released any information about that. So your guess is as good as everybody else on the internet, including mine. But SpaceX and the FAA are working hand in hand to make sure that all of those items get closed out before IFT-4. Now, what's going to be happening during IFT-4 as well? They know that the booster will probably make it back down to the Gulf of Mexico because IFT-3, they were very close. So SpaceX is confident that the IFT-4 booster will land in the Gulf of Mexico doing a soft landing. It's going to be a virtual landing on the landing pad and the catch arms. So the launch pad, as you see here at Starbase, Texas, those arms will kind of virtually catch the booster as it lands in the Gulf of Mexico. And that will be hopefully the last time they do a virtual landing of Starship before they actually land it back at Starbase, according to Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk has promised some stuff in the past. We all know this. Elon is kind of one of those. He's, he's a sales guy, right? So I trust the guy. I believe in him. But he wants to do a landing of the booster at Starbase, Texas for IFT5 if this works out well in the Gulf of Mexico. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. Do you think the ship, or sorry, the booster, do you think the booster could fly back to Starbase and land on the launch pad on the arms like this right here, land like that um, for IFT-5? It's pretty close. I mean, IFT-5 could be a few months away because IFT-4 will probably be the beginning of June. So if they could nail this IFT-4 landing, uh, booster landing in the Gulf of Mexico, then there's a possibility that they go for it for IFT-5. Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button because not only you're going to get content from me, but you're going to get content from other content creators out there about spaceflight, NASA, and SpaceX that you might not know about. It's going to be better for you in the long run because you're going to get more people giving you great content on YouTube. So let's get back to the news of IFT4 and what's going to be happening. There's another thing that's happening with IFT4 that didn't happen with IFT3. Didn't really completely happen. And we think that's going to work out well this time. It wasn't a complete success, I should say. IFT3, they tested the bay door that they're going to be launching Starlink satellites out of. Now, they opened it pretty well. It looked like everything went well, but it looked like there was a little hitch on the way back in, so the, the the opening was like this. Okay, so it opened up, and when it came back in, it was like chick, 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 chick. Gave a little chick, chick, chick on the way back in. So when they were closing it, so it seems like they might be working on that in the future as well. IFT4, perfect time, because if they want to launch IFT5 and actually land the booster at Starbase, 
they might do that as the big thing for IFT5. We're going to talk about IFT4's big thing in a minute, but another huge thing for IFT5 could be Starlink satellites. Now, IFT4's big thing is pretty big. Uh, they're going to virtually land the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, hopefully. So I guess there's two big, big, big things. The booster landing in the Gulf of Mexico softly and not doing a uh, flight termination system style explosion over the Gulf of Mexico, but also the Starship itself, the ship re-entering the atmosphere and not burning up. Elon Musk has stated that that is the big deal for this mission. So could they maybe land the Starship? All signs point to know that it's going to hopefully get back through the atmosphere, but they're going to FTS this thing uh, before it hits the ground or let it hit the hit the water. Sorry, not the ground, but hit the water in the ocean and let it sink. And in my last episode, um, we talked about what could happen to the ship itself when it lands in the ocean. What would happen to the ship? Does it just sink? Does it float for a while? How do we protect this thing while it's out in the ocean? Well, it's more than likely going to sink within the first hour being out there. There's going to be holes all over the thing. Think about it. Engines, holes. There's ducts, holes. They could FTS this thing too. So there's a there's a plan in place by SpaceX and by um, you know the the government bodies to protect this while it sinks. Then when it sinks, it's going to be at the bottom of the ocean. So no one's going to go dig it up and pull it up to the top. They're going to make sure that nobody does that. And they're going to make sure that nobody gets the engines, the Raptor engines. And if they do, SpaceX is already working on the next version of Raptor engines. So even if they do get these ones, SpaceX will have the next version ready by the time they learn about these engines. SpaceX will have another modified version that's even better. So it's going to take a little while for that to happen anyway. To pull a Starship from the bottom of the ocean would take a while. So if they get this completely nailed and they launch Starlink satellites for IFT5, I believe IFT6, other Starlink satellites, and they're going to continue working on the uh, the mission, which is mission critical here is Artemis. They have to get a Starship to the moon to work with NASA for the Artemis program. And all of these things that they're doing now, it's paramount that they land a booster every single time. And when they land this booster, they can reuse the booster to fuel more starships because they're going to do in orbit fueling of a starship and they're going to need tens of these things, maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen, who knows yet. They haven't tested it yet. So they're not exactly a hundred percent sure what's going to be happening. It's sort of like a starship. You don't know exactly what's going to happen when you get out there in the wild. So, uh, NASA has said anywhere between 10 and 20 of the refueling tankers um, or refueling tanks. And there's the possibility. E- Elon said about 10. So Elon is always optimistic and he always has to sell this as the best thing ever because that's what he does the best. He's a good sales guy. He's also a great engineer. So don't get me wrong there. He's really great at that. But the fact that SpaceX needs to do this within the next five launches. They need to start flying tankers. So by IFT 10, I believe they're going to start flying a version of a starship uh, that could be a tanker. I just give it a few more flies and I believe they could, they could pull that off. It's going to be a while though. They still have some time too, you know, Uh, the Artemis program, Artemis three, probably not going to launch till 2030, 20, 2020, nine 2030 so they have five four to six years to get this done and you know i i think if they continue at the rate that they're going now they could get an artemis ship um into orbit where they transfer people probably polaris program um within the next few years you know three years or so they could get people into a starship and they would dock with a starship with a dragon capsule of course and they'd load people in the starship just to check it out to make sure everything works right, make sure that people can survive in it. Basically like a mini space station. So how cool is that? Yeah, they're working towards that. So let me know what you think about IFT4. Also, there was some information 
from a, a document that was released lately, uh, just recently, a document was released that was um, from the federal government, from the federal register. There's a proposed action from the FAA, a vehicle operator licensed to SpaceX at uh, Kennedy Space Center. And this is a wild thing. Think of it, the at Starbase right now, SpaceX is possibly looking at five launches per year. Only five launches. They need a hundred launches, according to Gwyn Shotwell, to put people in this thing, to launch people in this thing, right? And in 2019, the FAA and SpaceX works worked together to do an environmental study at Kennedy Space Center so SpaceX could launch starships. And everything was good. They were all ready to go, and they were ready to launch that version of Starship in 2019. Whatever that version was, the scope of that Starship has changed dramatically since then. So the FAA, SpaceX are working together now for a uh, a new proposed uh, loss launch license, vehicle uh, operator license at the um, Kennedy Space Center, and also an environmental review of Starship. Now, the real kicker here is that SpaceX said that there's a possibility they could do 44 Starship super heavy launches per year. Launches may occur during the day or the night, and each Starship super heavy orbital launch would include either landing the super heavy booster in LC-39A or downrange in the Atlantic Ocean on a drone ship or expending the booster in the Atlantic ocean, no closer than approximately five nautical miles off the coast. Um, Starship could also land on at LC 39 or on a drone ship or be expended in the high seas between 55 degrees South latitude, 55 degrees North latitude. And SpaceX would continue to launch Falcon nine and Falcon heavy missions at LC 39 a while Starship super heavy is operational. So they're going to continue launching everything from from LC-39A while doing the Starship stuff. This is going to be a very busy launch pad. So um, they go on to say, the FAA goes on to say, the potential environmental impacts of all proposed construction and operational activities, including those from launch and landing will be analyzed in the new report. So they're going to uh, environmental impact study. It's going to be air quality, biological resources, including fish, wildlife, and plants, climate, coastal resources, department of transportation act, section four F farmlands, hazardous materials, solid waste, pollution prevention, historical architecture, uh, archaeological and cultural resources, land use, natural resources, energy supply, noise and noise compatible land use. The list goes on and on and on and on. It's a huge list of things that the FAA has to go through. Um, So this is going to be an ongoing operation for SpaceX and the FAA to work together to get this done. Because if SpaceX wants to launch Starship for the Artemis program, they need to get this cleared. The HLS program is paramount. It's so important to the future of spaceflight, to the future of NASA, that they need to get this done. And this scope hopefully isn't that bad because SpaceX has made a bunch of changes to the Starship, but they can lean on what um, the environmental impact study that they had at Starbase And look at that information for, um, you know, some data. It's not going to be exactly the same because, of course, Starbase and um, Florida are definitely not the same thing. They're near parallel. Not the same thing, though. Not even close. So the FAA has to make sure that SpaceX is all good down there. So that's about it. That's all we have for right now, everybody. Um, please take a second, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about IFT4. And also 44 launches. That's incredible. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next one.